here we are on overtime. Does the panel think that Congress should authorize Obama's use of force against ISIS? No. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, sure. I, I, the, you know, the president, it, what he does is he repeals the previous authority in Iraq uh, to, to go and do this. It's a more limited action. But why can't we let the countries in the area fight ISIS? It's, 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 yeah. it's their fight. Well, we can't. I, as long as we're in there, aren't we always giving them some reason not to hate each other? Well, no question. Which is what they need it, to do. There's no question. <laughs> but you, you already, the president has a greater authority now. This actually limits his authority when you take over. But he said that order. not that long ago that ISIS was not a threat to our national security. Well, here's the irony. They're suing the president for usurping uh, this authority. That the Boehner's got a suit against him, and they've given up their power to earmark. Oh. And now they don't even want to vote on the board, and they're just going to let him go ahead with it. I think Congress ought to get involved. They can vote it up or down. But Congress ought to get involved. They have a constitutional responsibility to do that. I'm going to agree with the well, Republican yeah. representative on this. Yeah, if say, we're going to fight, we should yeah. definitely should do it through Congress. And, and to put, put their names on the put record. Put their names on. To let actually people, have let this action be done in our name. Are you for actually doing Three -way it? Three-way agreement here. Bombing? I am not, um, not really. Not really. I don't think ISIS is a threat to us here at home. I think they're doing some horrible things, and I think there's a lot we can do to help reduce that. But I think our 15 years of war in the Middle East haven't done very much. In fact, it's probably yeah. created more ISIS than that. You know, and, and I'll build... Uh, you know, I think I give. I think you give. You stand behind the president on this. He's going out on a limb on this kind of thing. He may be a Democratic president, but I think you give him the authority and hope he carries out better than the authority we gave Bush. You, you don't think oh. that it. Mm. Oh. Ah. Tom. <laughs> Dang. Well, it went sideways. There's Dangerous no stuff. I know, but yes. it went sideways. Yes, it sure did. Well, I mean, Jeb running for president says Bush was a great president. He's got to say that. Yeah. <laughs> How you're gonna he's the one guy. He's the one guy who was allowed to own George Bush because everybody would say if he did the opposite. Wow, guy can't even stick up for his brother. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Dave, what can you tell us about the rumors of an X Files reboot? <laughs> <laughs> from from that to that. Yeah, these are these are people's questions that they write in. Oh, oh, oh! I thought these are, I thought these are random. <laughs> these are. I, I, I think it looks good. I think it looks good. Very good. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. What a, a reboot of, of, as a TV show? As, as, as a limited run television show. Oh, a limited run. Yeah, limited. How many shows would it be? I, I, I don't know exactly, but it'd be limited. Oh. Be limited. <laughs> <laughs> Less than infinite. <laughs> so after all these years, that shit is still out there. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's, it's, fuck, I'm, I'm just as surprised it's, as you. <laughs> it's just like political correctness. I, I we thought we got rid of it in the 90s. I also do not believe back. in conspiracies like like you. Yeah. I, I do not. Uh, I, I believe it's very difficult for two people to keep a secret right. from a third I, person. I agree. Let alone killing Kennedy. You right. Know? So I, yeah, it's not going to happen. But. Uh, so no, we have, love a conspiracy. We have 100,000 uh, scientists all over the world that are creating a conspiracy saying there's really right. climate change. They yes. all get together <laughs> and they <laughs> work it out. Right. And conspiracy <laughs> of facts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, does the closure of the U.S. Embassy in Yemen signal another foreign policy defeat for Obama? I, I, I don't think so. I, I, I think it signals a rational move in a country that's just collapsed. <laughs> Although he did cite it as a success just a couple months ago. Well, and but, but the country it's, collapsed. It's it's yeah, man. I mean, it's exactly. It's, it's, yeah, he I mean, should have cited it. Bill, at what point? You first you, you, just, earlier you said you know no national interest with ISIL. Then you go, it's Yemen. You know, well, who cares about Yemen? I assume you're thinking. No, I'm where, not saying where, that. You're uh, reading my mind. <laughs> What I'm oh. saying is it's Yemen, bad shit always happens. So at Yemen. what point in that part of the world, it does, is there any point at which complete instability, kind of mur murderous caliphates, causes you to think that the US has an interest in that part of the world? Well, they have, we have an interest, but it's how best to serve that interest. I think the best way to serve that interest is to stop being helicopter parents for the Muslim <laughs> people who have to have a civil war. ISIS is surrounded by strong countries, all have avowed interest in fighting ISIS. Why can't Saudi Arabia, Egypt, 
Turkey, Iran, all these countries, why can't they do it? Why do we have to do everything? Why do we have to be the guardians of the galaxy? And as long as we're always in there, it gives them a common enemy so they never have to face their real problems. Well, they are actually going together with you. It wasn't just the U.S. right now. It's a much broader coalition. And I would yeah, submit always... that the U.S. is the country which has the military capacity to deal with these kind of things, to think about how to do it. I'm not suggesting no. the U.S. has to go in with people on the ground. But, but Bill is right that we become like the invader. Yeah, we, right. we, bring them, if... we bring them together on that. That's, uh... Yeah, if it's done, yeah, if it's and... done poorly. But it's the same. You know, it, there's an analogous argument actually going on in Europe now. There's an analogous argument where, you know, the, the U.S., the, the Putin's move westwards, the Ukraine crisis, is, again, a situation, you know, should the U.S. be involved? What would you think there? No. No. So the Western well, alliance doesn't mean anything this, to you? It means something, but we never used to do this. We never used to think we had to go every single place where there Actually, was trouble in the world. I think the we world... did that all through the Cold War. I think there was a huge amount of that. There was a lot of proxy wars where the U.S. went in and where the U.S. supported people in the, during the Cold War. And we can yeah, argue about Vietnam. That, was a good thing. that was a great idea, huh? Was that a great idea, Vietnam? Vietnam was not a great idea. Well, that was the proxy war of which you speak. No, there was Nicaragua, all those kind of Central Another American great success. Ones. No, no, but just think about if you, if you, are you going to a world where the U.S. turns in and says, we no longer think we have this, a particular international global role. But there's play. something in between ter complete isolationism and getting involved every place in the world. But you it's are. A, it's a, no, I agree. And, I agree and, with you. Well, right. Maybe it comes down to what the word involved actually means. I think what we did in Iraq, wrong country, 100,000 troops, trillions of dollars, was an absolute mistake. How we slice and dice this ISIS thing, maybe we're just sending drones and it's a robot war. You would okay, agree. That's, that's what we're doing. The Iraq playing. first war just... was a good idea. Would you agree with Kuwait? I think it's, it was a very selective use of moral of superiority. <laughs> where it's like, oh, a nation got invaded, we should intervene. We don't do that universally. But we had a much broader coalition yeah. Yeah. behind us there. We're, we're, we're picky when our oil is at stake and it yeah. seems to matter a bit more. But yeah, it was a, was a stronger case for that one than the post 9 11 yeah. boondoggle. Okay. Um, with gay marriage now legal in Alabama, do you think we will see any conservative politicians reversing their stance on gay rights? I think the court is going to take it out of the political arena yeah. very quickly. I think that's... And they'll all be happy about that, right? They don't really want that one on well, their table anymore. Uh, pol politically, it's probably uh, an advantage to get that off the table for okay. Republicans. Uh, Robert, since the release of Food, Inc., have you seen any positive changes in the regulation of our food industry? Yeah, I, I think that, first of all, I think the public has become very uh, much more conscious of what they're eating, uh, perhaps due to shows like yours as well. So people are uh, much more, you know, concerned, and there have been some regulations, though uh, there's still all the antibiotics out there. And uh, I see this week eggs are okay again. Yeah, <laughs> right. Don't, well, every once in a while. Don't you love that? <laughs> we never stopped eating them. Yeah, yeah I never did either, because I, I was saying that last week. They love to I'm demonize shit. Them. Well, cholesterol. We got to get stay out of the sun and get a cholesterol. Eat pastured eggs. Eat what? Eat eggs that are like from chickens that are walking sure. around out on the grass. So you're going to eat good eggs and they're right. going to be healthy. So. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, audience. We got a few other things. Anyway, Eric, uh, I was saying the dude.